All right, 7.3, relating multiplication and division. So hopefully by the end, you'll be able to say, I can use the relationship between multiplication and division to determine the quotient when dividing by a two-digit divisor. So essentially, I just want you to see how they're connected. Um, you did it with, we've done, we've talked about it before, um, but really just want to see how it applies in other problems. So first, this isn't part of your, um, it's not going to be part of the slideshow, but it is part of your notes. I want you to write multiplication is the inverse of division. So inverse is probably um, a new word for you, but just means that they're like opposites of each other. So multiplication can go in that first spot. Just like how we've talked about like 56 divided by 7 equals 8 because 8 times 7 equals 56. So it's like those fact families. They're opposite or inverse of each other. So the problem we're looking at is a cafe owner orders 350 tea bags. How many boxes of tea will the cafe owner receive? So if it has 25 in one box and he ordered 350, how many individual boxes is that? So how could we represent the problem? Well, we could write a division equation. So we could do 350 divided by 25 to equal the number of tea bags. So go ahead and write that on the division problem line. So this is going to go on that where it says division problem. because That's the division problem we're looking at. But now we're going to write a connected multiplication problem. So I can take these two and multiply them to get our dividend or our first number. Again, just like addition and subtraction are inverse, multiplication and division are as well. So I can take t times 25, the answer, times what we divided by to get that first number. And then that will help us solve it. So, by knowing, ah, something times 25 equals 350, I can essentially try and figure out how many groups of 25 uh, can be made from 350. So, on your notes it says, then we can use the multiplication problem to figure out, you can write how many groups. So that's really what division and multiplication are, is just figuring out the number of equal groups it takes to get to a number. All right, so if you're familiar with 25s, think of like quarters. So we can say, okay, four groups of 25 gets me how much? Well, four groups of 25 gets me to 100, right? So then I still have 250 left. And then if I do another four groups, that gets me another 100. So then I have 150 left. So then I'm going to do another four groups. Remember, because I'm trying to figure out how many groups. And then I have 50 left. Okay, well, I can't do another four groups, but I know 25, 25 is 50. So that's two more groups. So two times 25 is 50. And then I have nothing left. So I did four groups, four groups four groups, and then another two groups um, to get there. Now I could just sort of guess and check if I'm trying to figure out how many groups of 25 make 350. I could just be like, well, maybe it's 7 and do 25 times 7. Maybe it's 12 and then do 12. So I could just guess and check, or I can think about, okay, let me do this in a... Um, sort of more efficient way. I could also just do 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus, like just keep adding 25s until I get there. Um, but that's a little less efficient than doing like groups of them because I can sort of group them up and it just goes a little faster. Yeah. 
So another way is to say, oh, well, I know 10 groups of 25 is 250. So then I have 100 left. And then 25, 50, 75, 100. I know I have four groups equals 100. And then I won't have anything left. So that's 14 groups on this one. We didn't actually count them, but 4, 4, 4 is 12, 13, 14. So either way, it takes me 14 groups to get there. So he's going to get 14 boxes, or she. So go ahead on your notes. You can use the relationship between multiplication and division to determine the quotient of multi-digit whole numbers. So it's just a fancy way of saying the connection, seeing how many times I have to multiply it, to get to my answer. I would go ahead and write this down just so you can kind of see a representation of how we did four groups, four groups, four groups, two groups. We got 14 groups, 10 and four, we got 14. I like to do groups of 10 or 100 whenever possible just because it's pretty easy math that I can do in my head if I'm trying to see how many groups out I can get. And then pause it, finish writing, and then we'll do some practice. All right. Again, hopefully you got it written down just so you have something to look back at. Now, 1,650 divided by 22. I will sort of do this one for you, and then I'll have you try some and see how it goes. So 22 is a little harder because we don't, we don't normally count by 22 like we do with 25s. But the related multiplication problem, sorry, I can think, well, something times 22 equals 1,650. And I just have to figure out how many groups of 22 it will take me to get there, right? So in this case, I'm like, well, huh, I don't normally count by 22s. I don't think I really want to count by 22s all the way to 1,650 because I'd probably be here a while. But what if we think 10 groups? 10 times 22, and just add that zero, so 220. That's smaller than my answer. If it was too big, it wouldn't work. But let's try 10 groups of 22. That gets me 220. I'm gonna go over here and start some subtraction. Three, four. Okay, so notice I would be here a while because I'm just doing 220 which is fine, okay? Totally gonna, uh, is a fine way to do it. But what if I said, okay, what about 20 groups? Well, I know two times 22 is 44, and then still my zero. Okay, so notice how I picked a slightly bigger group because I knew that it would go a little faster. If you can do more of the number, naturally it'll go faster. Okay, I'm gonna group that up and do 13. And then 13 minus 4 is 9, so 990. I can do another 20 groups. So then that's going to be another 440. And you might say, oh, I could do an even bigger group, which is fine. If you're like, I could do 30 groups or 40 groups, that is fine. Um, I'm going to do another 20 groups. I'm just making this note to the side so I know how many times I did it. Because if I just start subtracting it, I might forget how many times I did it. Now, I can't subtract another 220. I can't subtract another 440 for sure because I only have 110 left. So I might think, okay, well, 110 is half of 220. So I know the number of groups must be half of 10. So five groups. If you weren't sure, you could just start subtracting 22 one at a time. But I know 5 times 22 is going to equal 110. I'll have nothing left after I do that so that I can say, okay, 20, 40, 60, 70, 5 groups is how many it took. And if I wanted to check, I could always do 75 times 22 to see if it worked to see is that how many groups it took. Um, and if it is, great. If not, I can go 
try it again or figure out where I made my mistake. All right, now the video is getting a little long, but division takes a little bit of time. So I'll just do a few practice ones. If you need more practice, that's fine. If you're feeling good, I would still encourage you to do watch at least a couple to make sure you are on the right track. So go ahead and try number one. How many groups of 23 can you make from 184? Or you can think of it as 184 divided by 23. Go ahead. Hopefully you got it. So again, we're doing 184 divided by 23, which we're thinking equals some number. So that number times 23 is going to equal 184. Now if I thought, okay, let's try 10 groups. That's 230. Ooh, that's too big. So I know it's going to be a smaller number than 10. So I can think, okay, maybe I do two groups. Okay, 2 times 23 is not too hard to do. Just 23 times 2 is 46. And if you need to go do it on some scratch paper, that is fine. So I'm going to subtract that. It's going to be a 7, 8, 3. Okay, I still have 138. This is when you can see, okay, if I'm only doing groups of 2, it's going to take me a little while. But let's keep trying that. Another two groups to 13 minus 4 is 9. Oops, I still have 92. I'm going to subtract another 46. So another two groups. Uh, 8, 6, and 4. Oh, and then if I do, I know I do another two groups. I won't have anything left because I'll get exactly 46. So that's two, four, six, eight groups. Now this is where if I guessed and checked, I might have realized right off the bat that um, it, like I could have just tried 23 times 5, times 6, times 7. So there's different ways to solve it. Let's try one more. 14, how many groups of 14 can you make from 700? Go. All right, hopefully you got it. Remember, we're thinking 14 times something will equal 700. Or 700 divided by 14 equals something. Connected problems. So, I think, okay, 10 groups. That's 140. I could subtract 140. Let's start with that. So 10 times 14 is 140. I'm going to subtract that. I know I'll definitely have lots left. I'm going to box that up so it's 69. Subtract one from it. Oh, sorry. I did subtract one. I got 69. All right. What am I doing? Sorry. Let me start that one over because I was... 0 minus 0 is 0. Here we go. We'll take one away from there. 10 minus 4 is 6. Whew. Mental, mental moment. Sorry about that. Now, what if I did 20 groups? Well, I know 2 times 14 is going to be 28. So 280. 0, borrow, 16 minus 8 is 8. And then 2. Oh, look. I can just do another 20 groups. It's going to be 280. And I won't have anything left. And again, if I needed to go over here and try 14 times 2 to figure it out, that's fine. I just um, have my facts down more than you might. This is how many groups I made. 20, 20, 10. That is 50 groups. Which hopefully is what you got. Again, if you need more practice, that is fine. More than happy to help explain it again. Good luck.